105, that's negative. William Moore. Who's asking? Police. Name's Aiken. You're Moore, all right. You're an easy make from your picture. Lean on the car. What's the beef? Burglary. Westover Market last July. Turn around. I suppose you've got a warrant? That's right. Too bad, cop! I got other plans. That's how Detective Akins became a statistic. One of a dangerously growing number of police officers who are killed or injured while making an arrest. Akins was lucky. He ended up in the injured column. But that was because a doctor knew more about surgery than Akins knew about making an arrest. Or maybe he did know better. But he made one common and often deadly mistake. To him, Arrests had become routine. He grew careless. Careless in trying to make a planned arrest, single-handed, just because his partner called in sick. Careless in search technique. Careless in using handcuffs. Careless because he forgot that making an arrest is the most dangerous job in law enforcement. Now let's take a look at a similar situation. Quiet night. No news is good news. You big phony, all you live for is a good pinch. Anything not to have to listen to you all night, Bowman. Hey, cut back into that burger joint. There was a gray convertible. Could be the one they think that salesman Eisner stole over on 34th Street a couple of hours ago. Dope on him? Yeah, slow down a minute. Burglary warrant out of criminal court, good mug shot, four inch cut scar right side of face. Easy make. Any gun? Didn't say. Okay. Car 21, going 10 6, investigating suspicious vehicle. Eisner? What? I can't see. Police officer, Sheen and Bowman, you're under arrest, Eisner. There's a warrant out charging you with first degree burglary. Put up your hands. Turn around slowly. Take two steps backward. Now lean against the car and spread your legs. Way out and way back. Professionals. One man in charge and doing all the talking. Clear, forceful, all business. The subject knows he's under arrest and why. There's no doubt in his mind about what he's expected to do or what will happen to him if he doesn't. He searched thoroughly and methodically. The search, though complete, is a preliminary one and no substitute for a later strip search. The restraining officer should stay as far apart from and behind the subject as possible. Always check the cuffs for proper fit and use the double lock to prevent any accidental or self-induced over-tightness. When a subject is apprehended in possession of an automobile, be sure to search the car incidental to his arrest. Make certain that the subject's car is completely secured following the search. 
This could be a vital point in a later court proceeding. Always place the subject in a vehicle as far from the driver as possible. In other words, never give a criminal an opening. He may use it. How did the patrolman make out? Very well. Because they took nothing for granted. Never got careless. They knew that uniforms and jurisdictions change. But hoodlums don't. But what of the non-professional criminal? far removed from the hoodlum mentality. The subject for whom the arrest warrant is the first black mark on a lifelong record of respectability. What can be expected of him? Alfred, Alfred, look, tuna fish. Mm -hmm. uh, I negotiated uh, another little loan at the company today, Alfred. Of course, most of the proceeds went into our retirement fund. But I held out enough for a little celebration. The auditors left today, and not one word about our fund. We're safe for another year, Alfred. And after that, we shall have reached our goal. Yes, yes, just a minute. I'm coming. Yes? Uh, Henry Mead? Yes? We're police officers. I'm Detective Sergeant Case. This is Detective Hester. May we come in? Of course. I don't understand. I'm sorry, Mr. Mead, but we have a warrant for your arrest charging you with grand larceny from the Municipal Finance Company. You'll have to come with us. But the auditors, they said nothing. Well, they couldn't have... Mr. Mead, anything you say from now on can be used against you in court. I know. I know. It's all right. Uh, Mr. Mead? Yes? The can opener. Oh, of course. Would you raise your arms a second, Mr. Mead? Huh? But what about Alfred? Alfred? Alfred and I are very old friends. Well, we'll see that the landlord looks after your cat. May I say goodbye to him? Sure, Mr. Mead. How inexcusable of me, Alfred. I've forgotten your cat, Nymph. Sorry, Alfred. Attempts to kill arresting officers or to commit suicide, both in this instance successful, are among the many possible reactions to be expected of any subject, no matter what his background or appearance. Other reactions include flight and peaceful submission with rescue by a confederate. 
There are as many more as the imagination of desperate men can devise. It is your duty to be ready for any of them. Detectives Case and Hester were not. As a result, they died. And so did the subject, for whose safety they were responsible from the moment he was placed under arrest. Big city detective or small town officer, under the law, every arresting officer has this same responsibility. He should not allow his personal feelings for the subject, his respect for community status, past friendships, or misplaced sentiment to interfere with what he knows to be proper arrest techniques to protect himself and the subject. Let me have that warrant, Bob. Arnell tells me you've been out to Thompson Place before. When I was a kid, Chief, my daddy used to work for Thompson Furniture. You know the big party for all the company kids, Fourth of July? Most every kid in town was there. Half their folks worked for Thompson, the rest snuck in. Thompson didn't care. He was like that. The town's been good to Thompson. He's been good to the town. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, miss. I'm Chief Hancock. We'd like to see Mr. Thompson. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Thompson is working in a shop. If uh, you gentlemen will step inside, I'll tell Mr. Thompson you're here. I'm afraid that won't do, miss. I'll have to ask you to take us along with you. Very well, gentlemen. If you'll follow me, please. Yeah, come in. Oh, hello, Chief. Excuse the intrusion, Mr. Thompson. How are you? Fine. You know Officer Manning? How are you, Manning? Well, what's the matter, Chief? My check for bail in traffic court the other night bounce? I'm afraid it isn't reckless driving anymore, Mr. Thompson. The little girl died. Her folks have sworn out a complaint charging you with manslaughter. I have a warrant here from Judge Simon. I have to place you under arrest, Mr. Thompson. You extend your arms to the side, please. Now, you don't have to tell me anything about it, Mr. Thompson, but anything you do say... You okay, Thompson? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. You boys mind it? I put my coat back on. Heck no. Bob, get the man's coat for him. Look out, Manning, look out! The shock of arrest makes any subject's reaction unpredictable and potentially dangerous. The granting of personal favors immediately following an arrest should therefore be given very careful consideration. Deny or closely supervise any requests for water, use of the bathroom, articles of clothing and the like. Thompson's attempt at self-destruction was thwarted by the arresting officers. The difference, training, planning, alertness. A triple play that gives the best assurance of a successful arrest. The Romans had a saying, Sivis Pacum, Parabellum. If you want peace, prepare for war.
Eyeball one to dugout. This is dugout. This is eyeball one. The view is fine and the kids are still in school. Over. 10-3, eyeball one. Stay with it. Some people who've seen the kids recently are sure we have the right ones. Eyeball two. 10-3, dugout. I read you loud and clear. Got a good view of the schoolyard here. If anybody tries to play hooky, we're in good position. Over. 10-3. Captain Kramer, put me through the chief, please. Yes? Captain Kramer, sir. Put him on. It's Schultz and Larson, all right, boss. We have positive idents from the room clerk, parking lot attendant, and a bellboy they sent out for beer and sandwiches. I've got a command post set up here in the manager's inner office. He's very cooperative. The stakeouts are in position. A recon crew is out in the panel truck making a cover and escape route survey with a 60-second camera. They should be coming in any minute. What are you doing about clearing the surrounding rooms? The manager's calling all the people into his office on a pretext. When they get there, Lieutenant Tully explains. They're putting them in the dining room with food and television. That's it, sir. Okay, Pete. Come on in with the panel truck. We'll be waiting for you in squad room one. Farrington! Yes, sir! Kramer's lined up a hot one. Meet me in squad room one in 15 minutes. And bring your heavy squad. Now, are there any questions concerning the raid area? Any questions at all about any phase of this operation? All right, now I want each of you to come up to the board and show me just what you'll do from start to finish. We'll start with you, Captain Kramer. Preparation. The factor that separates the men from the boys. The heavies from the lightweights. Those who will live from those who will die. Keep your raid plan simple. Use your knowledge of the subjects and the results of a careful, detailed reconnaissance. Use maps, photographs, and diagrams showing possible escape routes, cover, and weapons needed. Then, when you're sure every man knows his assignment, you're ready. Unit 5 and the Chief, Captain. All the rest are in position, have acknowledged. Dug out to shortstop. 10-3, shortstop. Check off Unit 5. That leaves just the Chief, right? Right. Dug out to pitcher. This is dugout. Pitcher, you may take the mound. Units, this is dugout. Play ball, play ball. <clears throat> Did you tell some lousy two bit baby where? Yeah. This is the police. You are completely surrounded and isolated. You have exactly one minute to come out backwards with your hands over your heads. This is the first and last call. The next message will be a gas shell. Well, what is it? What is it? It's the end of the line for now, Schultz. What? The cops, stupid, the stinking, lousy cops! It's finished!
local county state or federal professional officers know the fundamentals of a successful arrest by heart simplicity of plan speed of execution surprise superiority of manpower and firepower and the safety of all individuals concerned there can be no such thing as a routine arrest for these men know that the greatest danger is carelessness stay alert and stay alive